Good evening, everyone. The, uh, this is the uh, Township of Franklin Planning Board meeting. If everyone would please rise at this time for the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stephanie, would you please uh, read the uh, open public meeting statement? Notice of this meeting has been given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act and the annual notice of meetings. A copy was posted on the Township website and notice of this meeting was sent to the Sentinel and a copy was posted at the Franklin Township Municipal Building. Okay, thank you. Uh, let the record reflect. We're going to see uh, Steve Ranson this evening uh, in place of Heather Flame. And roll call, please. Mayor Bruno. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Constantine. Here. Ms. Flame. Mr. Kelly. Here. Mr. Melanie. Here. Mr. Patch. Here. Mr. Ranson. Here. Mr. Shipnick. Here. Shipnick. Mr. Swede. Here. Mr. Travelin. Here. Okay, uh, moving on to the agenda, there is uh, no resolutions this evening. The minutes of the uh, July. No. July 21st uh, meetings. Our motion to uh, approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes from July 21st. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this evening the first application is uh, Marco Carlino uh, for a uh, lot, lot, a lot line adjustment. So, Chair, just to clarify, so we have um, 10 members. So, Mr. Uh, Clark is the second alternate. So, um, Steve Ransom would be participating. Correct. We'd be participating, but not really because we have that. We have nine to move. Correct. Yep. And uh, Mr. Ransom, Steve, is for Heather Flame. Good evening. My name is Ryan Hoffman. I'm here on behalf of the Carlinos. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to confirm that uh, the committee has jurisdiction. Yes. Okay. Uh, what we have here is uh, what I hope to be a relatively simple lot line adjustment. Uh, Carlinos own lots 27, 28, and 29. Uh, and the plan is, as uh, the, for the map, if anyone needs an extra map, I do have an extra one. Um, but, as you'll see, lot 27 currently has approximately. So you see at the bottom of the project, towards the east side uh, on lot 27, there is going to be proposed uh, removal of approximately uh, 19 acres that will be then uh, put together on to lot 29. Uh, the plan, though not of course uh, part of what we're doing today, is to put a lot of that property of 29 into farmland preservation. So there's no plans to build on that lot of any sort past that. Okay. Um, per the engineer's report, there were a few uh, things that the engineer wanted to uh, talk about. Number one was uh, the frontage issue, the yard. Uh, the frontage there is technically only about 7.8 feet, and I believe that's 7.8 feet from the right of way line. Um, that has been pre existing condition. Um, Nothing is going to be changed there. We're not asking for anything different in that regard. Uh, secondly, the rear yard buffer in lot 27, uh, what is going to be the new lot line on lot 27. Again, that's the east side here, north end of lot 27. Uh, you see it says masonry building about 26.9 feet from that lot line. Uh, again, that is no longer existing. That had, was a chicken coop that has been since uh, demolished and is, is gone now. So I do not believe uh, we'll need anything in regards to a variance on that either. Okay. So 
So with that, um, with no, I have no other comments at this time, and I open up the floor to any questions, comments, concerns of any sort. Probably sure. Please, Mr. Carlin, knows more in the case or sure. Yeah. What you had indicated. Right. It's for the testimony about the woman and truth, and nothing but the truth. So we got it all. Yes. And sir, can you please put your full name on the record? Michael James Carlin. Thanks, sir. And Chris, do you have any comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll go real quick. The, the only comment that I um, really wanted some testimony on regarding the 25-foot um, half width shown on the frontage. Um, it appears that's 25 foot from the center line of the road, but the clarification was just asked for if that represents the right of way line or if it's more of an easement dedication to the township. The answer is I'm not exactly sure on that answer. Uh, we certainly will, if you believe that a deed of easement is just to be certain is the best way to handle that, we'd be amenable to that. Um, but I, from what we found, I didn't see any kind of easement on the property. Based on the plans, uh, we just need clarification from your um, surveyor slash engineer. Um, you have a 50 foot right of way mm -hmm. listed under Forest Grove Road. More or less, what we're looking for is the yeah. confirmation of that line that's shown there. It's just the center line showing to the actual right of way line. Right. Um, so, just, just a minor comment. Okay, yeah, I agree. Is that Chris? The only thing I can add, if the masonry structure that you say was a chicken coop is coming out, that removes the only new variance from this application, uh, making it essentially a by right subdivision now. The right. existing condition, which is a variance of the front yard setback, that's not changing in any way. So this is uh, another one of those applications where the invisible lines on the fields out there are being shifted. Uh, so there's, there's really no impact to this whatsoever. They're not proposing any new development. Uh, especially if the larger parcel is going to go into farmland preservation, that's uh, no development's going to take place on that in the future. Then. So, uh, I have no, no comments other than that variance going away. This essentially becomes a buy right application. Got it. Okay. Rosemary, anything? No. Michael? Uh, no, I agree with Chris. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one line of judgment that you're not sure. That farmland from one that you're not going to the other. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is there a, a motion? On, is there a motion? I make a motion to approve TB 2205. Of a motion, is there a second? I'll second. Move and second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mayor Bruno. Yes. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Melanie. Yes. Mr. Ranton. My voting member. Yes. Yes. Mr. Stiffick. Yes. Mr. Swade. Yes. Mr. Travelin. Yes. Mr. Patch. Yes. Okay. Board of Motion carries all in favor. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you for your time. I much appreciate it. <laughs> Next application, uh, Deborah Scavelli. Mm -hmm. We don't have practice right now. I guess we do. I didn't break my paper. I Good evening, Tara Vargo on behalf of Deborah Scavelli. We have another lot line adjustment here. Um, this is oops, this is um, on Dutch Mill Road, right in front of the White Oaks Country Club. 
There are two lots, lot uh, 64 one, lots 27 and 28, and you will see most easily in this tax map up here that the one lot wraps around has some land, lot 27 has some land that goes behind lot 28. And what this application seeks to do is just take the line that's up the street and just push it straight back. So we'll have two rectangular lots. Ms. Fargo, one second, please. The, uh, let, let the record reflect. Uh, I have one member that has a conflict because of the uh, uh, his residence being within the uh, 200 foot of the okay. property. So he'll uh, he'll be abstaining from uh, voting and uh, commenting this evening. Thank you. Which, which member is that? Right here. Mr. Kelly. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I can't comment. Um, so, we should do that all well, we time. can get a tie vote. Now, don't we, even number, we can end up getting a tie vote. I may have to see the second order then. Uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll take a chance and keep moving. Okay, great. Uh, there's no new develop. There's no new development proposed at all. There's no there's no extensions to houses. There's no new driveways, swimming pools. There's nothing happening here. It's just simply putting that lot line straight. So now this. Uh, Lot 28 will not have property that's owned by the next door neighbor, you know, to its rear. It's going to be just this guy, this lot is all one lot here, and 27 is all one lot there. I don't want to belabor the point. There's really nothing okay. else to say. Ed, Chris, any comments? Yes, I'll go first. Okay. So this one is similar in nature to the one we just the application we just heard say minor subdivision say lot line adjustment the, the invisible line between the property shifting it's uh essentially a, if the lot line were a gate or a fence it's swinging 90 degrees up to make two perfectly rect linear lots uh, what makes this slightly more complicated is that there is uh, a variance required here uh, both lots are existing under size lots um, and this is changing the degree to which they're not performing. The overall density of the area, still two lots, the, the total size of them combined is not changing, but the degree to which they are not conforming, one lot that is already undersized is getting a little bit smaller, one lot that's already undersized is getting a little bit bigger. So that technically is a both variance, which you have to find in the positive and negative ratio you have to uh, There's one other existing condition variance, uh, insufficient lot frontage on lot 27. Um, that's an existing non-conforming condition that's not being proposed to change. Um, my only question was, which I believe she just answered, is that there is no uh, no new construction, no grading, no clearing, nothing changing on the property other than the invisible lot lines. But it is technically a variance in that the lot sizes are changing and are still going to be non-conforming. Uh, I don't think there's any way you can reconfigure these lots to get them conforming without making one extremely non-conforming in order to get the what is it that's required? Three point. We couldn't even do it if we <laughs> combined them into one lot. It's yeah. not even enough. There's no six point eight. It's personally not possible to get two conforming lots here. If you tried to do the, the merger doctrine, since I, I remember they are under common ownership, is that correct? It's titled slightly. The, this, for all intents and purposes, so yes. Okay, so in some instances where you have two undersized lots, the merger doctrine would apply where you just merge them into one lot. But if that were the case, then this would trigger a D variance for having two principal uses. So I don't think it's, it's possible to get two conforming lots here. You have existing non-conforming lots. Got it. Okay. Rose, anything? Just from a zoning standpoint, it definitely is more suited this way. Okay. Michael, you're good. Uh, the only other thing um, that we actually talked to Tara about previously with Pine Lands, they're reducing you know, one undersized lot's going to be even more undersized. I think either they need to get a certificate of filing or at least find out that they are exempt and have Pine Lands say they're exempt. I'm not saying to delay tonight, but I think we should at least for the purpose of making sure it's a valid approval for the applicants as well. Just that it doesn't come back. Finally, like says it because they might, they're picky. Okay. But the attorneys have worked that out. Well, I, well, no, we, we do have a difference working. of opinion on that. I mean, let, let's say what could possibly happen. I mean, the pilot says, no, you can't do that, and it just stays the way it is. I, I don't know what is accomplished by going to Pinelands and having them say, anything. Um, there's no construction and usually the nitrate dilution model, which is what's involved here in determining you know, what lot sizes are recommended, um, nothing's changing about the overall net. It's net zero. Right. So, uh, you know, okay. in my opinion, it's, it would be right. superfluous to do it. 
you know, as, as long as you, you know, you're advising your client uh, in that, and you're okay with it, then you know, so be. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it would be triggered if they were going to go do some building or do some improvements because then you're inc increasing the impervious coverage and then they would have the right, the panel would have the right to, you know, no really jump in on that. But okay. yes. No. <laughs> All right, just time on there. Uh, is there any questions from the uh, yeah, yeah, member yeah, of the board? Yeah, Ed, you yeah, have John? Oh, I'm sorry. Real, real quick, uh, just to highlight the one comment that I had. Um, the only thing is to be updated to match the um, dimensions that were provided in the. Right. Agreed. Clean up on the on the plan. So I have a question in reference to pine lands. In your application, in your checklist, under New Jersey pine lands, you said you were exempt. Right. And why is this uh, minor subdivision exempt from the pine lands jurisdiction? Um, if you look at the rules, it, they talk about it, there are. Um, if you're going to make make development that's going to improve, increase impervious coverage or things like that, that's what triggers. Pinelands, but there are several things that are exempt. Lot consolidation; those are exempt. There's a list of exemptions, examples of exemptions on their website. But basically, when there's no new development proposed, there's nothing to trigger a pinelands review. Thank you. And your position is that the applicant falls within that exemption. Right. That's okay. my position. Yes. I just want to make sure clear that that exempt is not a minor subject is not an exemption. Listed in there, so just so for the record to understand that. Um, okay. But they, they're not going to deny them doing this, it's just that they may want some recitations in the deed. No, they can get that. Um, so I don't see that as, a, as listed as an exemption. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion on PB2206. Okay. Second. And that motion was to approve, correct? That's correct. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mayor Bruno. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Melanie. Yes. Mr. Ranson. Yes. Mr. Sipic. Yes. Mr. Swede. Yes. Mr. Tavalin. Yes. Mr. Patch. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not even going to attempt it. Next application is the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Dan Parenti from Hoffman DeMuzio here on behalf of Giotto Bakery. Giotto. I have with me this evening Mr. Dersamo, the principal of Giotto Bakery, as well as the owners of um, Community Commons, the shopping center right down the street. And uh, what we're asking the court, or asking the court, excuse me, asking the board tonight permission to uh, open what he wants to put in a, an existing unit is a 5,000 square foot wholesale uh, cookie bakery. Uh, and this is, uh, he's going to be baking cookies at the site. He proposes to put in two ovens, two mixers, a sink, and a packing area. I call for a motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> so, we need so he, uh, I, I, I submit that, you know, and they're here to offer any testimony the board wants, wants to hear, but I'll... Why don't you have them come forward this sure. morning? Uh, okay, Jeff. Good evening. My name is Joseph Derasmo, and I am the owner of Giotto Bakery. Okay. What else? I'm going to have you uh, sworn in. And I'd like the other gentleman introduce himself, and the attorney will swear he's in for testimony. Yeah. Uh, Prahar, owner, owner of AJC at LLC and Community College. Okay. Would you prefer? Would, would you prefer me just ask them questions and do it that way? Okay. We'll, we'll do it. Why don't we start with with Joe? And we're going to start with the bakery. Why don't you tell about what you're proposing, the number of employees, hours of operation, things of that. Go right. Okay. So um, I have five employees right now. Hours operation are from six to five. Um, I do deliveries a couple of times a week. We leave early in the morning. And now, I heard what early in the morning is four thirty in the morning. Yeah, four thirty five. Yeah, so long before the anyone's there. 
who does the deliveries? Um, I do get deliveries two or three a week for suppliers. Um, we don't use a lot of water. I can tell you that. In the mixes that we make, maybe five gallons a day, oh. if that means anything. Um, what else would you like to hear? <laughs> well, let, let's have the attorney finish. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go to the board's questions afterwards. So there's going to be very little traffic at, at the site is the, is the point, because he's going to have um, uh, the employees are kind of coming in at 6 in the morning and not leaving till the end of the day. There is more than adequate parking there. I know the uh, zoning officer has some questions which we're prepared to answer. In, in that the parking lot has uh, is all properly striped with with uh, appropriate handicap parking. Um, the I know there was a question concerning the um, dumpsters. The dumpsters are located behind a fence, are not visible from the street. They're on a 50 foot long concrete slab, and in front of the fence there's uh, there's plantings. So there's bushes planted, and you cannot see the dumpsters unless you go all the way around to the back of the building. Uh, and to find them, because I had to do it myself today just to find to see where they're located. So I think I think that's uh, um, addressed. Um, I know they're, they're, the lighting uh, at the site, and I'm going to have uh, Labby speak about that. But the the site has both lighting uh, under the awnings and affixed to each of the telephone poles throughout the site, so the parking lot is adequately illuminated. Is that yes. correct? Correct. All right. And um, uh, another question was signing signage, and um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. is not going to have a sign. He doesn't need one. The only sign he's going to have is a small one in his window, just so people who are making deliveries know where he's at. But there's going to be no signing on the street, no sign, no signs on the building. So there's going to be no changes whatsoever to the exterior of the building um, at all. None. Uh, it's all just going to be an interior fit out of. Uh, of right now, it's, it's eleven thousand. It's over eleven thousand square feet of empty space, and he would take five thousand square foot of that to fit out his uh, his small bakery. I believe I heard it. This is a totally a. Uh, there, there is no retail. Uh, None. It's all at all yeah. level. Yeah, and, that, and that's why we're here. Is, is the fact that there is no retail aspect of the it. So there's going to be no you don't no customers coming here. So I said it's actually going to be a less and less uh, in, uh, intense use than would be uh, a retail uh, situation. Okay. All right. Let's go to uh, the engineer and planner, please. All I can say is uh, this is a waiver of site plan application. We have not reviewed it. I, you know, we haven't seen any drawings. So I mean, they're seeking a waiver of site plans. So they've not submitted a site plan for us to review there. Um, they're going through your ordinance now to see if there are specific conditions that have to be satisfied in order for a site plan waiver to be granted. Uh, I'm not seeing specific provisions in here. But, uh, sounds to me if they're not proposing any changes and this is uh, deemed to be a permitted use of the highway commercial zone right. as your zoning officer has already indicated in the report. Uh, so a matter of do you feel that a, a new site plan is necessary to show you existing conditions uh, for a building where uh, they're moving in and doing interior renovations. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Rose? So um, I did review the file, and the reason they are here is because any anything outside of retail required them to appear back before the planning board. I did do a site visit as well. This site is very attractive. It's kept very nice. There was no issues. I didn't believe that this is anything more than a site plan waiver because it's really just a change of use per se, you know, um, someone going in and doing wholesale versus retail. Um, and that's the only reason they're here tonight. Other than that, if it was a retail use, they would just be coming to me and getting a zoning permit and getting a CCO inspection Correct. so okay. you know just putting it on the record uh, although I I will say I'm a little disappointed they're not going to have a sign because I, I would like to see a sign there I think it would be nice but uh, maybe down the line okay, okay. and Michael uh, yeah this, this site is fully developed it's uh, already had site plan approval so the site improvements have been reviewed and properly done either pursuant to our ordinance or has been waived 
uh, the engineer reviewed in the past, uh, I think they were before the board twice for uh, the approval. Right. So you have all this the parking, the lighting, everything's been done. Oh, all right. right. So, okay. so that the site plan waiver, the purpose of site plan waiver is that the site is already developed, doesn't need site. Work. Then you waive the site. Part. Right. Yeah. It needs site work. Yep, understood. Uh, any, uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, uh, at this time, is there a motion? I'll take a motion to approve. To appro I got a motion to approve. Second. Second. I, I have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mayor Bruno. Yes. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Melanie. Yes. Mr. Patch. Mr. Ranson. Yes. Mr. Sipic. Yes. Mr. Swave. Yes. Mr. Traveler. Yes. Mr. Patch. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Fire up those ovens. Okay, and the fourth application tonight is PB 2208. Good Lord, Good Lord. I'm not, I'm not even attempting. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Brian Hall of Ward Shindle and Hall, and I represent the applicant Gallardo Investments oh, and its sole member, uh, Michael Bowles, who's here tonight to testify. Would you like to bring Michael up? Uh, sure. Introduce yeah. himself and swear him in uh, in case there's testimony to be given. Well, I'm Michael Knowles. I'm here with Yes. Okay. If I may, I'll just give a brief summary, and then if we need okay. Mr. Knowles. Um, so again, we're, we're here for 1088 Delcy Drive. It's Block 1306, Lot 1. Um, it's currently a vacant building. It's a rather small building. Um, I understand it was previously used as an adult bookstore, perhaps. Um, you are correct. Okay. <laughs> and so we are here because we're changing that use. Somebody had to say it. <laughs> um, and so we are looking for a site plan waiver, much like the uh, the last application, uh, because it is a developed site, and we're not changing anything about the exterior of the building. We're not changing anything about the parking, the lighting. Uh, there's a sign there. We'll just probably put a sign in there. Um, we're going to re-landscape, top coat the driveway, and then make improvements inside so that it can be used as a youth wrestling practice facility. Um, so, you know, for those reasons, and because. It's a lot better than an adult bookstore. Uh, you know, we think that site plan app, site plan waiver application is appropriate. Um, it is in the highway commercial zone, but next to a residential area, I believe. Um, and, and so this is going to be just a, a better use, less intense use. Um, Michael, I have to tell you, but they're not going to have like. Um, you know, a whole high school team of kids there at any one point. Um, it's going to be, you know, a few cars here and there with parents dropping off kids and stuff. Um, your uh, zoning officer did an excellent job at preparing a memorandum dated August 11th that really goes into much more detail. So um, I would kind of just reference that. Um, but otherwise, if anybody has any questions for, for Mr. Knowles, I'm sure he can answer them. The, I, I was able. I had the opportunity to drive by uh, the uh, vehicles and the uh, mean to uh, as as only adjoining property. None of that's neighbor behind me. He agreed okay. he's going to remove it soon. Okay. So I said it was okay as soon as we start working. Yeah. The truck bomb. The truck that I work. Yeah. It's like a broken down tractor trailer and something else. Stuff back. Okay. So. <clears throat> And the same th the same thing is true on this application. You, you didn't have the opportunity to do. Correct. Okay. Uh, Rose, let's go to you. And uh, you know the uh, I see quite a few comments here. So uh, let's yes, touch on the comments, please. Okay. So I, I went out to the site and I, I met the owner at the site and we toured the entire site and. The amount of improvements that he's going to do are all really aesthetic, cosmetic type improvements. There's no uh, structural changes whatsoever. Um, in the sign box that remains, there is an existing lighting, and the sign will be uh, illuminated once they have the new sign installed. Uh, underneath the sign, the applicant is proposing a stone bed type landscaping to give the property some curb appeal from the highway, which would be nice. Um, 
the existing sign box and as well as the pool everything's going to be painted as well as the outside of the building with a nice new fresh coat of paint and and uh, inside the building he's doing tons of renovations including a new hvac system uh taking out one wall that really kind of really defeats the whole purpose of that whole entire building it really opens it up once you see that the wall is out of there and lifting the ceiling up you know uh taking the tiles out and letting it go like more of a natural type look for the wrestling kids um restriping the handicap uh and the parking lot the me code uh the aprons will be restored at each of the entrances and there'll be uh, directional signs painted on the entrance area as well as little directional signs out there entrance and exit just to have more of a safety type flow uh, pattern inside the driveway itself um obviously there's there was some trash and debris and just like um just not being kept ready for so many years he's already agreed to clean all of that up and there was a uh, tractor trailer bed on the one side and some disabled vehicles uh, in the woods area on the other side he's already spoken to the resident they they're not even owned by this property they're owned by the residents behind them um they're going to have them taken out of there because obviously they're that's an, a violation in itself uh they're installing a new septic system they're going to provide a well certification for the existing system if that can't pass he's going to have to install a new well we've already went through that we also talked about the um, the likelihood of maybe installing a, a fence around the back area of the property because it is residential and the way that the lots are configured behind it we just don't want any impact on the residents that are already living there I think they've kind of already been through enough with the last use so it would be nice for like to have like a separation of the two uses and and provide a little bit of a buffer I don't think they're gonna need much for this use but you know, I, I still think that, you know, a nice buffer between the two uses would be acceptable. Um, and he's agreed to it. Um, let's see. Uh, he's already re-energized the property with the electric. And, you know, obviously, like I said, he's putting the HVAC system in the, in, in the um, building itself. You know, to do all of this, you know, for a youth organization, um, really, it's it's, it's kind of nice, you know, the, the town's getting something like this for the children, you know, so they'll have a place they can go and practice and, you know, their own hometown, which I think is really nice and it's really noble of uh, the applicant to do this for them. There's no, no revenue stream coming in here for all these improvements that he's putting into property. That's it. I recommend it. There's been no testimony as to what type of business this is yet. It's not a business. It's a youth wrestling facility practice center. Okay. Yeah. I agree, Ralph. I mean, we, all we have an application is I want a site plan later, <clears throat> but you need to know what it is. What exactly was Yeah, is it a duck? Idea. What is it? It's a wrestling gym for, for youth. It's called a Pride Wrestling Club. Are you a 5013C? I am not. Okay, so you are for profit. I'm going to lease it to the club. That's, I'm going to be the owner of the building, and I'm going to lease it to the club. But 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 what, how does the club get? I mean, how do you? If you want, if I will have a uh, if I have a youth wrestling team, and I want to use your facility, how do I make that happen? You would, you would lease it from me. You're only going to have one team. Just yeah. one team, right? There's not going to be a bunch of random people there. And, and where's the team based? They're at Delcy High School right now. Delcy High School. So they all practice at the high school together, the middle school, the youth. And it's just a mess with all the kids in there together. Our grandsons were in there. I, so I agree with I, that. I, I, yeah. I guess I'm, yeah. a, I, I'm confused. So, so you're going to be the owner of the owner of the property, of the but you're not now. the I'm not the owner LLC, of the whatever. So you. I'm not the owner of the wrestling club now. Okay. Are you, the are you affiliated with them? No, I'm not. But you're the owner of the building, and you're going to lease the you're going to lease the building to the to, to the, the club, club, right? Yes. Is there any any for a fee? I mean, what, what do you what, what's the lease? Well, what are gonna, the terms? It's going to cover the, the cost of the building. Well, the the, the, the lease agreement is going to cover the cost of the building, so there is an income stream to you as owner of the building. Possibly, but it's going to take a long time for that to come back. I'm not doing it to make money. I'm doing it for the. You know, I have a practice facility for my son. No, I know, but we're just trying to understand the purpose of, I mean, of the whole thing. It will be leased and they will, they will pay to be in there, yes. Right, but the kids who come to work out pay. Correct. So it is a business in, in a sense. Yes, essentially. 
invest in the business, otherwise you move to back. This is a commercial, highly commercial event. Yeah. It's either a business or a business not permitted. It's technically for profit. We're just not sure how much profit you might make. Is that correct? Correct. So you're by no I saw from your emails you're a realtor. Right. Yes. 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 I do I do have a question. What is the projected number of wrestlers on the maximum day going to be? Uh, there's about ten to fifteen kids per session. They usually do one to two of them, right? Okay, so thirty thirty kids max yes. plus coaches. Yes. At one time? Not at one time. It's usually about fifteen kids per session. And, it, and that's kind of where I was formulating the question. I, I'm looking at the hours of operation, uh, two hours of operation. My, my concern is, is there ample parking available? If the session is two hours long, the parents are dropping them off and then coming back, or are they waiting for the kids? Uh, some, some drop off and some stick around. Yeah. There's yeah. plenty of parking. The, the parking lot's very big. Is there, is there uh, spots that are now? There's spots there now, but we're going to renovate them, put strike them, and get yeah, yeah. So, is there enough? Tell me, as the engineers, is there enough? I mean, this, this square foot here is under a thousand feet, right? So, we got wrestling coaches, up to 15 kids, so let's say half those 15 kids' parents. I mean, is there enough room? Capacity? I mean, I mean, we didn't have the opportunity to do it. I mean, we can take a look at it. It's, it's, I mean, it's, they, it's a matter of, I mean, we could, if we had more information, maybe we could look at what the code would require for a, uh, I'm not entirely sure what this youth would fall under, if this falls under a club or fraternal organization or a personal service business. business. I also know that uh, in the highway commercial district, child care centers are permitted at right. I don't know if you're going to call this child care, but it's, it's a, a form to some degree. So it's probably a permitted use in another one of those categories. But in terms of what the parking requirement would be, I, I can't say that off the top of my head. What about life it's safety? A matter of, if it's a, essentially a private club, it's not something that uh, I can just sign up tomorrow or show up next week and say, hey, I want to have my, my child wrestle today. Uh, so you have some control over how many people are going to be coming. Right. Right. Yes. And, and uh, how many people are, are in the club total? Uh, yes. I'm not 100% I'm not certain. We have a like, ballpark figure. 30, 40. Okay, and how many would, would be there on any given night on a regular basis? Or on any, any one given scheduled time? It's, it's more during the season, but it's probably 15 a session, so maybe 30 a night. So one mat, I would assume. You're putting one mat in there. It's whatever will fit in there. Right, so if it's a thousand square feet of wrestling mats, it's, it's like six or seven hundred square feet. So, yeah, it's not very feet. so there's one mat, there's plenty. I mean, my opinion is there's, there's plenty of room. Coaches just to stand around it. Plenty of room if there's 10, 15 parents in there. Most parents don't. They just right. drop off. They just off. drop off. Yeah. So they sit in a car. It's number of exits, so that really doesn't that really doesn't cause a problem at this point. Council, let me help you out a little bit. The difficulty, I think, uh, speaking not speaking for other board members, but I think the difficulty here is the lack of information. Now, yes, we know the building, and yes, we see it a lot, but we don't know how many sp uh, actual parking spots there are. Uh, the details are not there. Um, with, uh, you're asking for a waiver, of uh, a plan waiver, and there is, uh, to me, it sounds like there's a lack of information uh, being presented on ha how to address it. There's too many unknowns, uh, 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 I guess cars, what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, the, how many vehicles can park, uh, legitimately park uh, on that property? Uh, because there's no auction. auction. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, it's, uh, I was actually going to bring that up. Uh, I think it's like five or six parents. Five eights of an acre. But there's just the only drop for every drop is all five eights. So it's going to be the same drop. Yeah, it is. It's just a little What's your guesstimate on how many parking spots are there? I would say there's about 15 there. 15? Big, big. The concrete, the, the parking lot is all broken up That's on the one place. side. It's practically disappeared. Once he actually restores the parking lot, he'll be actually, he'll be able to create more parking on that side. On both sides, he's got plenty of land to do this. There was a survey, I think, submitted with the application. So... 
it's in your path. This is the front of the property is the parking lot, and but on the sides there's plenty of room if you needed to extend the parking lot there too. Okay. I just did a. Uh, my eyes on these kids, they used to be. Uh, seven, seven, seven. Yeah. Just really point out Google Maps on our phone. Yeah. Survey shows some asphalt in the front, probably has room for five to six parking spaces. I don't think there's a dirt area on the north side of the property that also could be used as a parking lot. So. Correct. Uh, I think even behind, I think even behind the building, using behind the building, there's space. Behind the building, there's space. Although it's like there's some trees back here. Probably got thirty parking. Yeah, there's no there's trees back there, but it used to be parking on the side where it's it's dirt now. The cars are parking there. So I just want to highlight one of Rosemary's comments about how they need to get septic approval, well approval, just to get an understanding that wherever that field eventually goes, they can't park they can't there. Park so. Okay. The, I, I, uh, I guess my question now is to Rosemary. Uh, the obviously the septic piece of it, they're not going to be able to park on. How are we? How are we going to control the parking lot and the review? The review and the plan of a, of a parking lot on on that site uh, without a plan uh, internally, or uh, is the township in a position to? Uh, monitor or to approve a parking plan, an asphalt plan. So what I, what I would suggest, if the you know, because I did explain to the applicant that if you did not get the site plan waiver, that he would have to come back for a um, minor site plan. But I think this is you know so really a minor situation that we can still have an S. He has an escrow established here. We can still have a grading plan submitted prior to him doing the parking lot, just to ensure that there's no water flow or anything like that. There's no issues with the grade or anything. I think that should be submitted as a condition of approval just to make everybody feel comfortable okay so yeah we, we we're in a position to do it internally yes uh to the engineers review and and go that way uh, if that's they were, right if they got the waiver yes okay all right mike what's your position on that i think that and i understand that the, the use always makes the sound the sound great so you use the rest of them, which is good but we got to remember we're trying to Make our corridor look nice and have standards for parking and landscaping and lighting, Where? And ingress and egress, <laughs> and, and do all that so that we can have an you know, attractive or functional and safe site. Um, it sounds like we're backing into needing a site plan. Well, and we're going to put our engineers in a position of approving something that they didn't, we're going to review something they didn't take a look at in advance. Um, well, we don't know how much parking is necessary. We don't know where a septic is going to be. I just, I just feel like we're wrong. We have on, maybe we're on a highway. To a few of the possibly being an issue from now. How long has that bookstore been, been not, it's, not in business? There's never been a site plan there. It's been a decade. Right, and you know what? I appreciate the fact that they're here doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. So we shouldn't really be, you know, trying to stick it to the guy. So I'm going to make a motion to approve what he's asking for. And I'll second that. Before we move to a vote, I would like to see some language added to the motion to ensure that the zoning office's office indeed has some oversight as far as grading, et cetera. And I don't know what to say exactly, but I need a little piece added besides, yes, go ahead, grant a site plan waiver. I want to finish what I was saying earlier. Um, nobody's trying to stick anything to anybody. Um, mm -hmm. Not just because I can count it. And my comments <coughs> are oh, such that I want to make sure that we are protecting the township and have a safe, attractive site. Um, you know, to say the applicant is going to consider putting up a fence, I understand that. It's nice, but what fence, where, how high, when you're leaving, it's, it's commendable that our zoning officer to take on this job. It's a major job of trying to manage the development of the site. So that's my comments. But the board, you know, certainly it's your pleasure. Um, but we'll make sure it's clear that. Well, if in fact he does want to put a fence up, wouldn't he have to be back applying for a permit for a fence? Correct. But the board normally determines if he needs a fence or he doesn't. Uh, yeah, so. 
So, I mean, I mean, listen, he's going to probably want a fence because when they have the auction and the people who live behind him, they're going to be parking their stuff on his lot. So that might be his preference. You know, he might make money leasing spots to the auction. $40 for parking. Okay. Uh, I mean, get my, walk myself through this. Uh, first off, I have a motion and a second for approval. There was a comment with regards to uh, the, uh, the zoning officer and engineer uh, to uh, review. To over view, to view or to review the parking situation, and I'm personally adding the fence piece in there as well. The motioner, do, would you, are you uh, in agreement to include the uh, uh, Rosemary, or the zoning officer, to oversee uh, the with the engineer the parking issue? Issue. Yes. Okay. And yes. the seconder. Yes. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Well, I'm sorry. What was the motion? <laughs> motion was for the approval of the site plan waiver, and then your which but that that is conditional with the zoning officer and the engineer overviewing or reviewing the parking situation, approving the parking situation and the rear fence, uh, the installation of the rear fence and the park. We have nothing here to tell us where people are parking and all that. So there, there needs to be some control of that and that's part of, that, that's part of the motion. And, and to what extent uh, is this parking review? Like are you specifically the, the grading plan? Yeah, the grading, grading plan. Okay, so you're right. requiring your grading plan. Number of, like, number of uh, the, the number of parking spots, the uh, the number of parking spots, the handicap piece of it, everything that everything that would apply per statute if there uh, wasn't a site plan waiver. Just to jump in here, and I just pulled up on the all street parking requirements the a, a youth wrestling facility unsurprisingly is not listed individually specifically as having its own parking requirement i, I didn't see club or fraternal organization but a health and fitness club has one space for 200 square feet there's also a provision that where any parking requirement is not listed not found in the list that uh, there's no public standards for the ITE trip generation manual which I, I don't think they have the wrestling club there either there's also one space for 200 square feet which would be this building is approximately a thousand square feet there's five parking spots okay and knowing that we're still going to require the grading plan and the parking I'm sorry. Knowing what he just said, you're still going to require him to get a grading plan and show yes. you parking. Okay. Yes. So just so I can, in the event that motion passes, I can draft a resolution that would be um, those items listed in Rosemary's memo for, uh, plus oversight for the parking. Parking for parking and the um, managing grading and defense. Basically, just show it on a plan, the parking, not, not go all out and get a site plan. That's right. Just, just Reading. noted on the And a site visit. Not he's doing a site plan. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Again, I have a motion in a second. If the conditions were added, uh, is there any other comments? No other comments? Vote, call vote, please. Mayor Bruno. Yes. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Melanie. Yes. Mr. Ranson. Yes, with a caveat that I don't do own a property on Nelson. I believe I'm more than 200 feet from that property. Put that out there. Mr. Yes. Mr. Stippick. Yes. Mr. Swede. Yes. Mr. Cavalone. Yes. Mr. Patch. Yes. Motion carries. All good luck. It's crazy. there's a couple of ways to get things done. There's a whole lot to be guessed at. I understand right now. Okay, let's move on and wrap up this evening here. Uh, second
Secretary's uh, report. Okay, so Joe, before we get into that, I, I have a question back, you know, when we were going through the, the minutes and all. Um, I, I do have one question. And Mike, you weren't here the last meeting, you were on vacation, but I, I wanted to make sure that you had reviewed um, the, uh, the solar ordinance and that uh, everything that was outlined in that ordinance was um, uh, consistent with the, um, the, the master plan. And, uh, and I'd ask that you confirm that either to an email or a letter. Uh, and I did. Um, I think, but I think Chris did an even much more thorough okay. review, which mm -hmm. I did review and I agree with. Mm -hmm. um, he did a much more thorough review of the plan. But uh, yes, okay. I did have a letter. I actually did a letter in advance of the event of the board. Went with it, I think we were very sent back. So we would have something. All right, okay, thanks. And I did see Chris's co uh, correspondence. Um, I forget. Uh, Jimmy, would you like to see a copy of that correspondence? Uh, if you could just send it to me. Rosemary, send would you? Everybody. Yeah, actually, send it to the entire board. But, sure. Uh, yeah, send it. Because I'm not sure if everybody was copied on it. It was just. Uh, it is actually the last three pages of the uh, email that was sent out to everyone for the Oh, okay. 214 okay. pages of the, uh, the packet. The last three or four pages are the uh, MI put together. Okay. All right. So it is in the packet. Well, was adopted by the committee, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Right. They were all kind of done with that, but they did adopt it. Okay. All right, Secretary's report. So, Chairman, the Secretary doesn't have a report, but I have uh, submitted a report on behalf of the Land Use Department, just an update on the issues that we're having. Some of those applications may end up before the board. So in case you're out there and someone brings it to anyone's attention, you have an idea of what's taking place. Um, and then, of course, the fees that we've collected for July and the escrow we collected, the COA payments we collected, actually started collecting, you know, and we're doing really well with that. And the engineer and uh, the attorney's bills are all in there, but nothing, you know, alarming or right, Motion to accept the, uh, I'm sorry to accept you all there. Uh, You're fine. Motion to accept the secretary's report. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion. Second. Second. Well, uh, roll call vote it has uh, dollars attached to it, please. Mayor Bruno. Yes. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Melanie. Yes. Mr. Ransom. Yes. Mr. Stipic. Yes. Mr. Swade. Yes. Mr. Travelon. Yes. Mr. Patch. Yes. And the next item on the agenda, which I believe we just touched on, was the uh, sole recommendation correspondence, uh, which was attached on the last three pages. Uh, is there any any other questions on that uh, correspondence? which we actually passed the last meeting. Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, Michael, any need for a closed session? No. Nope. Okay, that's a good thing. All right, does anyone else have, uh, oh, Rosemary, is there anything else uh, that you have, Michael, anything? For the record, I'm not anti-union. For the record, what? I'm not anti-union sports. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. He might be pro. He might be pro. Yeah. 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 Exactly. He's pro bookstore. <laughs> he's not anti youth, but he's pro okay. bookstore. <laughs> and Stephanie, you're, you're good. All right. Is anyone on the board have any comments this evening? <laughs> not all. Yep. No. No. All right. I'll entertain a motion Wait, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have motion. Second. Second. Move and second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone.